Sing me a song of a last that is gone. Before we even jump into this video, before I even say hello, I want to give a warning. This video contains spoilers. Many, many spoilers. If you are not completely up to date with the main book series of Outlander, I would not suggest you watch this video unless you are okay with spoilers. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee and today is Tuesday, which means it is Droughtlander Day. <laughs> So each and every Tuesday I am bringing out an Outlander inspired video for you guys because, well, we're in Droughtlander season, which means we're waiting for the next season of the amazing TV show Outlander, or we're waiting for the next book, which is Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone, from the incredible author Diana Gabaldon. But if you have been following along with this series every Tuesday, you know that I have covered many things from Jamie's Ghosts to Why Claire Travelled Through the Stones. But today I want to talk about... Dragonfly and Amber. Now this is the second book in the Outlander series and it is what season two was based on. But today I want to talk about what things were in the book that weren't in the TV show or things that they changed in the TV show or adapted and things like that. Now please note that they're not going to be in any particular order. It has been a long time since I read Dragonfly and Amber but I do re-watch a lot and I am currently on a reread but I'm past Dragonfly and Amber and it was a while ago because I'm such a slow reader. In fact, I use audiobooks because I can put it on in the background and continue on my day. And then I have the books as a backup for when I'm like, oh, I can, you know, I have time to sit down and read. But audiobooks take a long, long time. So for me, everything that we talk about today is not going to be in order. It's just going to be from like my memory, which is a sieve. Now I know this won't be every single detail and there will be some that I have missed so any that I miss please pop them in the comments below so that it can jog not only my memory but let other people know as well. One of the very big noticeable changes though that most people who have read the books and watched the TV series did notice was the very start. Now in the book Claire and Bree are visiting Roger in 1968. That is your opening sort of jump and I know as a reader I was like hang on what <laughs> back when the books came out but in the tv series it does show you claire coming through the stones and the year is 1948 i think with the tv series they really needed to adapt and put that in to have it as the opening sequence just so viewers were sort of kept in timeline of events i mean it is a it, it's okay for novels to jump like that so drastically because they have a lot more time to explain and sort of bring in more details but for a tv series that was limited to amount of episodes they really needed to go okay this is what's happening here is the timeline of events you know claire's gone through the stone she's back home and let's go obviously then the tv series is able to jump back in time and show you what actually happens throughout their time in france but it gave a real insight on what happened when she initially went through the stones now the villainess of Leary McKenzie, she is not in Dragonfly and Amber the novel at all. She does not make any sort of appearance. I do believe that they threw her a little appearance in season two just to help build up her storyline and keep her connection there for when she returns in season three. But we do know when she's seen in the TV series, she comes in and she's apologetic and she's, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm a changed woman. And then we see that little shift of, well, no, she's still obsessed with Jamie as she's leaving. I did like that they threw that in there for the TV audience just to keep that connection going with Leary. I mean, we know book readers knew that, well, she's she's going to play a part. But TV viewers, if you're only a TV viewer and not a, t and not a book fan, sorry, then you, you needed that added in connection. And there's just that reminder of that character being there. The connection between Jamie and Claire, though, throughout the entire second season on the TV show, I felt just seemed really strange and distant. I I know that Jamie had just suffered all of the trauma from Blackjack and Wentworth, and we will go into that in a little bit, but I feel like their physical and emotional bond was just not given its full potential in season two. During the books, they're never any issues with intimacy or anything like that but the tv show they brought that into jamie's character and it really just i feel like it threw off their entire chemistry it just i don't know season two it felt like there was less 
love involved even though in the book series they most certainly still had that love connection well I felt like they had more of that love connection throughout the books but yeah I just feel like the tv series didn't really give them the connection that they should have had and back with Jamie's trauma in the books he seems to deal with it a lot better than what the tv series portrays Jamie to have dealt with it and we know that people deal with PTSD in there is no one definite answer for how people uh, react or recover from not recover but how they deal with PTSD but I feel like the significant difference was that Jamie in the books seemed to I don't know he just it felt like it was more long-term effect where he would have nightmares and that continued on for a long, long time. But he was never unable to be intimate with Claire in the books. I feel like the TV version of Jamie just didn't cope with the trauma as well as book Jamie. Or he had a different effect of it. I, I don't know. It just, it was very different in their reactions and how he sort of coped with the trauma of Wentworth. Now, the amazing episode of Faith, that is one of the all-time greatest episodes of Outlander, in my opinion. It really did just do everything to pull at the heartstrings, and no matter where you are or who you are, I do believe that that episode would have affected you in some way. Now, the thing is, though, that episode was sort of brought in simply for the show because they never returned to Faith's gravesite in the books. It was played out completely differently and Claire and Jamie were never at Faith's gravesite together like they showed in the TV series. In fact, Claire's recovery after everything that has happened was with Louise out in the country. So that was a, it was a much bigger timeline or the timeline was better shown throughout the book that, you know, it was a longer period of time for the recovery and to deal with everything that had happened understandably again the tv series is limited to its timelines and how much time they can predict throughout a show so i can understand why they changed that but it just i don't know the books obviously prolonged it maybe is a better word compared to the tv series another scene that was changed but sort of adapted was when claire eventually tells jamie about her sleeping with king louis now in the tv series claire pretty much just comes straight out with the fact that she has had to sleep with king louis and deals with that in you know as quick a context as possible but in the book claire does not tell jamie initially that uh, she slept with king louis in order to get his freedom it is a bit of a drawn out thing and it's a scene that was dumped from the tv show but in the books jamie and claire reunite and reconnect and jamie senses that claire is holding back or keeping a secret they take a journey and they go to a mountain by the seaside and it's here that Claire admits to Jamie that she slept with King Louis. And it's here that she insists on getting a thrashing with thistles and even though Jamie is very, very angry, Jamie's more angry about the fact that she was not able to tell him. Obviously they have a very intense scene and they make up. And then the pair go exploring and they find a mysterious cave in the cave there is cave drawings and then two skeletons now so far nothing has really come out of this and i don't know if it was just sort of a, for background sense or background sort of playing up but I, w I do to this day wonder if those skeletons are going to come up in a later book one of the smaller things well to me it was a smaller thing that they missed out on the tv show was the carving of the initials into each other's palms. Now, I'm not sure why this was dumped, as it could have been done in a sort of a quick-ish, round-around TV way, but I did notice that they completely dropped that out, and there was no carving of initials. One of the most heartbreaking scenes for me personally was when Claire returns to Culloden to sort of say her goodbyes and sort of tell Jamie that she won't be returning, and it's, you know, just, it's heartbreaking to me. That entire scene is just absolutely heartbreaking and I was not prepared for it because it wasn't in the books. Now in the books Claire never returns to Culloden, she does not go back, she is unable to bring herself to go and when she was meant to be going there with Bree she pretends to be sick. But in the TV version we see Claire going and talking to Jamie and telling him you know what her life has happened and everything and to me that was just absolutely heartbreaking. It broke every single connection I just 
it was heartbreaking. That was right up there with the Faith episode. And it just broke me. Absolutely broke me. Now I'm absolutely sure I have missed out on some be that big things or little things. So whatever I have missed, please drop them down in the comment section below. I love talking with you guys in the comment section about Outlander. I mean, you people that watch Outlander videos, they know the obsession is real. They understand that you can think about Outlander 24 hours a day. And I just, I absolutely loved it. If you haven't checked out the Jamie's Ghost video, for example, it's got a lot of comments and a lot of theories. So if you haven't watched that one, go check it out. I will link it up here. The comment section, guys, I just, I love it. So many theories that I did not even think of or had just, it's blown me out of the water. So I have absolutely loved it. I'd also love to know what kind of Outlander content do you want to see each and every single Tuesday. Droughtlander is going to be here for a few more months and I mean I just want to bring out content that you guys are enjoying and that we can discuss again I say in the comments. So, so please let me know what kind of Outlander content you would really like to see and I will do my absolute best to bring it right here every Tuesday. If you haven't hit that subscribe button please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Sing me a song of a